A True History of the Johnstown Flood is, uh, takes place in 1889 against the historical backdrop of the Johnstown Flood, which happened in Pennsylvania. It was one of the first great disasters in America. It has to do with the breaking of a dam at the top of a mountain, and the water comes rolling down and takes out a community mostly of working class factory workers and it centers around a theater troupe, the Baxter family, um, who are on tour in Pennsylvania and who get trapped in Johnstown during the flood. Essentially, our parents were Joseph and Constance Baxter. They were very, very um, famous, well-known actors in the mid-1800s, 1850s, 60s. It's all us in the room getting to create these things and tell the, the stories of the parents and yeah. us for the first time. With the playwright. With, with the, the playwright, playwright in the room. In the room. Yeah, who's still huge. open to change and is still developing the script herself. From the beginning, I was struck by Rebecca's, I, I think, remarkable writing. The fact that she's a critic, she writes social critiques, she writes social dramas, social comedies, that basically always look at politicalization of a major disaster, not unlike Katrina. Something like Katrina, it just can't happen to us, the, the, how poorly it was dealt with. Mm -hmm. But Johnstown, in a lot of ways, was the exact same way. The mm -hmm. chaos that, it, that happens and sort of the human stories that come out of the chaos. Every story is personal, and it's easy to lose sight of individual struggle when faced with it on a massive scale. That's what I think Rebecca does a great job of doing, of being able to focus in on one story. There's such a class divide between Fanny and Walter, and that is something that is, is fairly blatantly explored in the play. Fanny sort of becomes his employee and he's sort of owns part of her family's company so at that point it's I wonder you know it becomes questionable about how much could he love her if he kind of thinks of himself as owning her I came to see the show James no I mean what is your interest in us besides my sister Walter I'd say 51 percent da, 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 da. <laughs> I think that's a big event Walter reveals he owns 51% of the Baxter Company. He's got a really keen sense of what drama is. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. What's dramatic on stage? What's theatrical? I mean, what he does is James comes backstage looking for Richard. This far into the process, we've been experimenting with different approaches to the text, different approaches to um, getting on our feet, then coming back to the table, and just sort of we're, we're playing around. We're sort of trying to... I think we're trying to find how exactly we're approaching this plan. Theater is such a collaborative art, and I try to suggest essential qualities on the page, basically, without being overly prescriptive. And so then when I saw, especially the sets for this play, the scope of the design that Walt Spangler has come up with, and that, in a, you know, in collaboration with Bob, is just um, opens the world up in a way that even I hadn't imagined. So it's up to us as theatrical artists to stimulate the imagination, which is a very powerful thing. So that you're imagining a flood and you're seeing it on stage, even though we don't use a drop of water. Part of the pleasure of coming to the Goodman Theater is to see the sort of extraordinary work of our designers, who are almost as responsible as the playwright and the director and the actors for realizing the world of the play. Part of the surprise, always at the Goodman Theater, is to come in and see what we have in store for them.